There are many, many different ways to look at the mind. We're going to look at it in a very unique way this evening, but very, very helpful. Your body eats. You eat, you feed your body. Every one of you know that depending on what you feed it, it affects how it feels. You feed it junk, it feels junky. You feed it the right amount and balance, it feels good. Your mind is the same. Your mind is a thing. You're to see it as a thing. I wish you could just put it out here like a machine, like a computer. If you feed your mind junk, it spits out junk. If you feed it healthy, positive things, nice things, it spits out nice things. It's just a thing. We're just too close to our minds, so we don't see it as a thing. We make a gross mistake. Somehow we see our minds as us. Your mind is not you. You are the one who has a mind. You are the one who can make the mind do what you want. Make it say hello, it'll say hello. Make it say goodbye, it'll say goodbye. The minute you tell it to, right or wrong. <laughs> make it say hello, hello, right now, over and over again, inside. Saying it, isn't it? You can create thoughts. Your mind creates thoughts. That's what a mind is. We know what a body is. What is a mind? It is a thing in the universe that creates thoughts. It's a thought-creating machine. You need to understand this, just like you understand your body reasonably, how to feed it, what happens, and so on. You need to understand how you use your mind, just like how you use your body. But we're not taught this, and we don't deal with this. So your mind is an instrument, an appliance. I like it to be an appliance. My mind's an appliance, like a blender or something, except it's a thought-creating appliance. If I tell it to, if I use my will, I can make it do whatever I want, period. I can make it visualize what I want. I can make it say what I want, at least for a moment. And so can you. Every single person, if I tell them, tell their mind to say hello inside, their mind is going to say hello. It may not last very long. It may get distracted by something. But you have the ability to make your mind create the thought that you want, don't you? When you are not doing that, then the mind creates its thoughts on its own. That's really interesting. It's so weird. Like if all of a sudden you're driving along and the mind says, oh my God, I don't think he really liked me. I thought he did. And he's talking about something that was seven years ago. All right? It'll do that. Don't you cut it short. It'll just start doing that. And you'll start feeling, oh, what if he didn't love me? And he was really just lying to me all this time. I thought, oh. and it just start feeling. And it's like, you just get lost in its thoughts. That doesn't mean you are its thoughts. It is creating a thought. And then you are the consciousness that is aware of this thought. Or you are the consciousness that is asserting will to make the appliance create the thought you want. Ooh, I want you to see those two different states. Willful creation of thoughts versus unwillful reception of the ones that are being created by themselves. Now, you know those two states. Those are very important states to understand. Well, why does the mind create the thoughts that it does? That's a reasonable question. You've got to live with the darn things. You have a mind. You have a car. You have a body. You know how to drive your car. You take care of it. You have a body. You take reasonable care of it. You don't do a thing with your mind. <laughs> you people don't know a thing. It's as, as if there's no separation between them and mind. If there's no separation between you and car, you would think about taking care of it. <laughs> it would just be you. You wouldn't talk that way. i take my car in. What are you going to do while your car's in? Oh, I'll rent one. I'll walk. You see, you can separate yourself from the car. What are you going to do when your mind's not creating thoughts? It's called meditation. I'll go to ecstasy. I'll just be somewhere else. <laughs> I won't be with my mind. Will you cease to exist? Any one of you that ever went into a meditative state, even once for a moment, knows that you're there when the mind stops. How about if I draw that as a bottom line of having meditated? I don't care if it just lasts in a moment and only once in your life. You knew that mind stopped. You're not in there saying, gee, I think my mind stopped. No, that's not your mind stopped. That's you thinking that your mind stopped. It just can stop. And then you're there. And there's this peace. That's why people like meditation. There's this deep sense of complete well-being. Why? Ready? Because your mind is not disturbing the peace. 
That's why there's peace. The lake is perfectly still until the wind blows across it, till the leaf drops into it, till something happens that disturbs the balanced state of harmony, of peace, of the lake. Fair enough. Some foreign event comes in and causes ripples. Your mind is exactly the same. You are exactly the same. If your mind is quiet, then you are quiet. You are remaining in a state of well-being because that is your natural state. If the mind is telling you that he didn't love you seven years ago, you don't feel comfortable. You're caught in thoughts that are disturbing. So you do exist when the mind stops. You can make the mind say what you want. But the normal state of a human being is that the mind is creating its own thoughts. Nobody's home. We use the word mindful nowadays. Nobody's being mindful that the mind is full. Nobody's there paying attention that the mind is making up its own thoughts and saying these things. So basically, why, at some point you get to the point, we say, well, why does my mind create the thoughts that it does? So I'm not creating them. Why does it do it? Now, you would think, I don't know why your mind creates. I don't even know you. How would I know why your mind creates the thoughts it does? But I do know. I know why every single one of your minds creates the thoughts that they do every single time they create them. And I'm not psychic. Don't worry. Don't put a shield up and I might read your mind. I don't know anything. I'm not going to read your mind. But I know why every single thought you ever had came up into your mind by itself. Why is it creating every single thought that it creates in the order it creates it is a knowable thing. Wow. Far out. Well, why does it do this? And why doesn't it just shut up? <laughs> why doesn't it just get quiet when I sit down? It doesn't. Because there's a problem here. Every single one of these thoughts that you are not... Now, if you use your mind to figure out 2 plus 2, you use your mind to figure out directions to drive, this is you using your mind. We can talk about why you would use your mind a certain way. It's a different issue. But it's still you using your mind. I want to focus on the fact that you are letting your mind create its own thoughts with nobody home. And I'm telling you that's running your life. And I always stick the eye in. It's ruining your life. Because it just creates these thoughts and the next thing you know you're lost in them and you're feeling certain ways and saying certain things and thinking things and if you're not careful, you're lost. You get lost. So now first, why does it create the thoughts that it does? I watch this very carefully, so have many people. And you will see it the minute you watch it. It's called witness consciousness. Objective observation. You decide, I'm going to watch what my mind does when I'm not home. Except I'll be home, but I won't tell it. It's like having one of those cam cameras. The, the cam cameras, right? you can watch what's going on in there. Don't tell anybody. Okay? So you go in there and you watch. And what you're going to see is as follows. I just talked to you two seconds ago. And I told you that shirt's a little bright. I don't think you should be wearing that in the temple. Okay? And then you walk in and you sit down. I'll bet I know what your mind is saying. I bet it's saying something about your right to wear whatever shirt you want to wear. Or, or it's saying, oh my God, I wish I hadn't put this shirt on. I don't care, but it's saying something about that shirt. And you're not making it say that. It's saying it by itself. Did I get it? What do you think? What's the probability? Pretty high, isn't it? Why is that? Why is that? I mean, it may seem perfectly natural to you. Why is that? Why is your mind creating those thoughts? Because it was not comfortable. Because you're disturbed by something. Your mind tries to release, tries to find a way to be more comfortable. And so by complaining about it, it's releasing energy. By figuring out, well, I can change the shirt later, it came up with a solution. It's doing something to try to get rid of the ripples of disturbance. Remember I said, when if it was perfectly calm with nothing coming in, it'd be very still and beautiful. But if a rock drops in or if a leaf drops in or if a wind blows across, then these ripples happen. Those thoughts are the ripples. A rock dropped in. Who, me? Me, I dropped in and said something. That dropped into the water of your mind, and now it's disturbed. It's not comfortable. So it tries to get comfortable. It's like homeostasis, where things try to balance themselves, tries to come back to an equilibrium. So the fact that it got disturbed, it tries to create thoughts. Please listen to me. No one will talk to you like this. It by itself, just like your body has an immune system, you don't have to make your white blood cells secrete, come out. You don't have to make all these different things happen, the antibodies and everything, do you? 
But they do happen, don't they? Your mind is way more brilliant than your body. It's much more subtle. It's, it's a higher level. So it also has a system to try to heal, to try to bring about harmony and equilibrium. That system is its ability to create thoughts that negate the problem. So if it sits there and says all by itself, I can wear whatever shirt I want. That's ridiculous. Who does he think he is? Why is it saying that? Because it's not comfortable with the ripples that are created inside the mind. Fair enough. And so it is by itself using this natural mechanism of trying to bring about balance by rationalizing, by putting one thought on top of another to try to neutralize. If you don't ever learn anything from me, will you learn that? You've been listening to an excerpt from Michael Singer's The Untethered Soul Lecture Series, Volume 8, Taking Charge of Your Inner Growth.